shirts. So I'm still doing the fashion crime. Some of the crimes of early new Australians that they were transport, transported for were quite bizarre. In those days in England, you would have been transported for being a suspicious looking Irish Catholic. <laughs> Imagine if those rules applied today. Uh, if you were a political reformer, get out. If you uh, tried to form a union, get to Australia. So it was really, really quite, quite low on the crime scale that people were transported for. But did you know about the women? Convict women in those days were usually reported as being low-class women with foul mouths and with loose morals. I refuse to believe that. <laughs> My great-great-great-great-grandmother wasn't one of them. But however, this was not always the case because uh, a lot of women would commit crimes so that they could get deported and meet up with their men folk. So it was a pretty good, uh, it was a pretty good reason to be naughty. But I say to a few of you ladies now, look around the room, look around the yard, would you uh, commit a crime to be deported with your men? I know you would. <laughs> some of these, yeah, some of these crimes were misdemeanors like being found in the yard of an inn in an indecent posture for immoral purposes. <laughs> that would never happen in a pub in Australia today. <laughs> I mean, I've never seen, I've never seen dresses so short as they are in Terrigal nowadays. I mean, I have to keep looking away. It's terrible. It's terrible. I got a ripped neck whenever I go out there. <laughs> Women would often intentionally offend authorities by burying their bottoms in public events. And God forbid, when asked who the father of their child was, would name the local priest. <laughs> Get to Australia. So I bet you're all wondering why on earth I'm here as your Australia Day ambassador in Bendemeer today. Well, I stand here before you because, like most of you, I have a passion, and my passion is art. First and foremost, I'm an artist, and to help fund my art, which is, and also discipline me, because I'm, as you said, I'm a bit of a radical. I'm an aerospace engineer, as we've already established, and uh, I work for Qantas, which is an amazing Australian airline. It's had its ups and downs recently, but still employs 35,000 Australians, so it's, that's pretty good, and I think it's making its mark on the country. Hopefully we can hang on to it. My passion for art and bringing people, uh, bringing art back to the people, which I've done in my region, which is the central coast of New South Wales and Sydney. Um, I've done a lot of, lot of public art stuff, naughty artistic stunts over my time. And as a, as a consequence of this, I was drawn to local government attention by staging exhibitions in public places, not formal galleries. I would have exhibitions in pubs. My first gallery was in a, I shared a space with a drive-in bottle shop, believe it or not. So there was always plenty of wallet opener on hand. If people were umming and ahhing about a painting, you just get the guy, give him a bottle, quick, get him drunk, and then they buy the art. And also, what I used to do was put on annual events like Rude Nude, which was very popular. And the mayor would come, and along with all the other people there, would draw nude people. So it was a bit different for, Wyong at the time, which was a very conservative little town, an ex-timber country town, and uh, I brought nudity and art to Wyong. So it was really good. And out of that uh, radical thing grew the Zoid art movement. And a Zoid is um, a cell capable of a spontaneous movement outside or a part of the parent organism. So we worked and created outside the square. We weren't in conventional galleries, we took art to the people, it was great. Some of my art stunts drew, drew huge media attention, like the day I staged a portrait exhibition on the steps of the Art Gallery of New South Wales, which was the same day that the finalists, uh, the people would bring their paintings for the Archibald Prize. So the media are there hungry for a story with a different angle, so we gave them the perfect story. 25 portraits of me sitting on the steps of the uh, Archibald Prize home. On that day I knew the media were hungry and uh, we ended up in every newspaper and three television stations with a feature later on in the week on Channel 9. So what it did was it elevated the profile of all those artists and that's, that's what I like to do by getting art outside of fixed galleries and self-interested galleries, bringing it out to like here and showing you lot 
few pictures showing you like the artists and what's out there and what you know so it's a, it's a bit naughty but it has it's very powerful over 30,000 people got to see a moving fully curated exhibition a full city block long a few days later and that was curated and um, we snaked the exhibition through Paddington which is the home of Sydney art and all the galleries are there going hope you got a license for this I go sure I have and it's like and where I had a megaphone and I'm going join the Zoid art movement in a public hanging today and we're going through the streets and everyone's going what are you protesting and we're not protesting we're celebrating art so we ended up with this big procession of people following us and uh, as I said television cameras and all that sort of stuff so it was really it was really good for the artists my passion for bringing art back to the people was rewarded when uh, I approached a super centre. I don't know if you have them in this area. It's, it's sort of like they sell like fashion and all this sort of stuff. Well, some very clever managing the manager in there made a decision about changing the way they were going to do business. So they lost half the people in the in their shopping centre, and there was 20, 24 shops that were vacant. And someone said, "Oh, why don't you put some art in there?" Being Mr. Public Art, I said, "Put some art in there. I'll fill the bloody place." So. Six months later, I, uh, I opened the place officially with over a thousand people in attendance. And uh, at, at its peak, we were, I was running 24 galleries and 64 artists were working out of free studios. So it was, it was very good. Free studios, they could show their art and people loved it. Since that time, I've been invited to exhibit my own art internationally with solo exhibitions in Montreal in Canada during the comedy festival. I don't know whether there was some sort of subverted you know, dig at me to have me there during the comedy festival, but still there was like over two million people in town and it was, was pretty good. And it was summer, thank God, because they invited me back for winter and it's minus 42. And I went, no thanks. And then uh, in 2010, the same year, I won the Cultural Award for Australia Day. I had an exhibition in Chelsea in New York, another invitational which bounced off the back of the Montreal show. And from then on, I uh, was approached by an agent in New York, and now I'm just completing my fine art degree so that they can start marketing me for a gallery in Chelsea, New York, for regular shows there. So, so my fellow Australians on Australia Day, I say, never give up on your passion, never give up on being an Aussie, and the outcome can be amazing. Look at that, I mean, you know, my dad goes, one day Wyong, next day the world. And he's, he was quite spot on. On Australia Day 2012 and beyond, I ask you to do the best you can, whatever that may be, and our nation will continue to prosper as it is now. I want to thank Tamworth Regional Council, Councillor James Trelaw, Faith Dixon, Peter Poole, Bendy Hotel, Bernie, and I would like to thank Australia Post, Woolworths, and the many other state, uh, the state government, and many other sponsors that make the Australia Day Ambassador uh, program work. And thank you for having me in your town. I love it. If you want to come up and say hello after, by all means, please do that. And uh, thank you again for having me. And God bless Australia.